everyone, I'm Tom. And I'm Kate. And welcome to another Mondays with the Mortons. We hope you're having a fantastic Monday and a great start to your week. Today we are coming to you from the Sedona area in Arizona and we have been having an amazing week. Yeah, we had our friends uh, from Michigan come out and stay with us for a while and we did a lot of exploring in the Sedona area. Yeah, we did a lot of hiking. The Red Rock around here is gorgeous and there's tons of awesome hiking. We also took a day trip out to Meteor Crater uh, east of Flagstaff, Arizona, which is a giant crater in the ground formed by a meteor that struck 50,000 years ago. And that was really cool. Really cool. We also headed further east all the way to the Petrified Forest and Painted Desert, which are beautiful. Yes. So definitely stop by if you're on I-40 traveling that stretch of road. And we've also been checking out a lot of the old uh, Native American cliff dwellings that are in this area. There's tons of them. And there are a lot of national monuments around here dedicated to the preservation of those dwellings. It was so cool to see how the Native Americans built their homes into this very rugged landscape uh, to utilize the environment, to really work with the environment, to let sun in at different times, and to use the uh, thermal mass of the earth to heat or cool their homes as necessary to act as that insulation. Interestingly, along those same lines, our friends that we're visiting are in the process of building an off-grid house that utilizes a lot of the same principles that those Native Americans used. So this week we thought that we would sit down and chat with them about their new project and um, share it all with you. We thought it'd be kind of neat since we like to go off-grid a lot and uh, how you can do it with a house that is not on wheels. So here is our chat with them. So these are our friends, Tyler and Jen. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hello. Hi. So to get started, why did you guys decide to build an off-grid house? Uh, well, I think the, the biggest thing was we just, we didn't want to rely on other people. We, we want to be sustainable by ourselves. Uh, we, don't, we don't need a power company to give us electricity or a water company to give us water. We can, we can do that ourselves. That's pretty much it. So you guys want to go off-grid. What does an off-grid house look like? I'm driving by it and what am I going to see? Not your typical house. It's going to be buried on three sides. The south side will be completely glass um, to allow passive solar to occur in our house. The sun can shine in in the winter when it's cold. Uh, we're building in Michigan so that's very important. Um, and then there will be uh, thermal masses inside that will hold the heat from the sun and release it throughout the night when it does get cold. Um, in the summer, the, the sun will be higher and we'll have overhangs to keep the sun out. Uh, and keep it cooler. And keep, keep it cooler inside. So what do you guys do for power? How does your power system work? So for power, um, we'll be using solar and wind to charge battery system. And we'll be um, drawing off the battery system most of the time. Uh, we will have a backup generator if we need it, but we have been for the past couple of years monitoring our, our energy usage at home and we, we feel like we have a pretty good idea of what we will be using. We shouldn't even use as much energy because of the passive solar and uh, some of the other uh, energy efficient things we're gonna be doing with the house. Uh, we'll be using higher efficiency appliances and We'll have a DC system to run our lights. A DC system, that's, I mean, that's how RVs are done a lot of times. You're actually going to do that in a house? Yes. Um, it's actually, I mean, when you take DC, like, like in your RV, you have DC. If you're running an AC light, you're taking DC, converting it to AC, and then you're converting it back to DC. Yep. All of those conversions... A loss of power. ...lose a little bit of efficiency. Yeah. So if we just run our lights on DC, we're getting rid of two conversions. Yeah. And we're going to run our fridge will be a DC, our, our lights will be DC, and we will probably have some DC power as well. I mean, we, we charge our phones on a USB. Why convert that to AC and back to 5 volts DC? Yeah. Water is obviously a concern when you're building a, a house in general. Um, the way that ours is different is we're going to be collecting the water off the roof it's going to go into four cisterns um, that are buried behind the house 
and then through there it goes into a filtration system. So the water that you're going to use for the sink, the shower, and the washer is only filtered twice and then the drinking water is um, filtered four times so there's actually a separate faucet for your drinking water in the kitchen and the bathroom. So why would you choose to collect water off the roof instead of putting in a well? For one, putting in a well is much more expensive than using the cisterns and you would use more energy to run your pumps. There's still going to be some pumps that we're going to have to use, but yeah. not not as no, much. Not as big of pumps. We'll be using a 12 or 24 volt, basically an RV pump, just like you have in your tanks in your RV, yeah. um, to pump out of a cistern to the to the sinks instead of pulling it out of the ground with a, a larger pump. Yeah. So we've considered putting in a water collection system on our RV for uh, boondocking. Uh, but we've learned that there are some legalities around that as well. What have you guys learned? Um, certain townships or states uh, do not allow it. Uh, fortunately, our township and our state do, so we won't have any concerns. But uh, I know there are some places that don't allow it, and their thought process is that you are stealing the water from the aquifers that it should be flowing into. But I'm going to pull it out anyway. <laughs> yes. that, that was my thought too <laughs> okay. for us like i mean we we know that there's a lot of chemicals that they don't test for in water and now drugs are getting into our water systems a lot of times and that's a lot of you know that doesn't make it into the clouds so for us like that's kind of why we want to go off grid have you kind of learned the same thing i mean even a well could have chemicals in it so um we did stay in a sustainable house in new york and the guy that we stayed with, um, when they built their house, they tested the water um, from the house that they were currently living at and the new house, and the new house was by far cleaner. So, and that was water off the roof. That was water off the roof. Awesome. Yes. Yep. And we, you know, we we are close to Flint, so um, with the Flint water crisis, we're yeah. happy to not have to deal with that once our house is complete. Definitely. It opened your eyes to realize that just because it's coming from a safe source it might not be yeah you know they, they were told it was safe for how long and yeah you basically get to re retake control of your the quality of your water mm -hmm. when yep. you do it the way that you're doing it so what do you do with your wastewater so once you use the water that is from your washer or your bathroom sinks um, it goes into the greenhouse and we actually use that gray water to water the plants so the greenhouse is set up so that it slopes downward and so you're not using any electricity to make that water run through there. And then from there it's, a, it's pumped back into the toilet and you're using gray water to flush your toilet with. So one of the considerations that we had to think about is whatever we're putting in our drains is going to go into our beds for our plants. So essentially you're going to be eating the chemicals that you're dumping down the sink. So it really made us think of what we're using as far as um, beauty products and cleaners um, to make sure they were biodegradable and safe for human consumption. Wow. And that's something we've really been doing now to, to prepare for moving into our new house. We, we've been going through different products and going, okay, this one, this one we like, this one we don't. <laughs> so in addition to just taking your house off grid utility wise, you also want to try to grow some of your own food and kind of become more sustainable in life in, in general as well. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we will be growing food in our greenhouse, uh, will not sustain us year round. Uh, we will need to grow additional food outdoors. Uh, we'll probably have an outdoor garden, maybe an additional greenhouse to um, to try to fully sustain our, our food needs. Um, along with that, again, we are doing what we can now to prepare for that, and we've started learning to can, preserve our own foods as much as we can. You've talked to us a little bit about an aquaponic system. What, what is that? We don't want to just grow vegetables and fruits. We want to actually have a meat source. So we are talking about growing fish and plants in the same system. So you're using waste from one to feed the other. We have an experimental aquaponic system we're building at home currently to help us learn how to do that before we get into the house as well. All of this sounds pretty complicated. I mean, have other people done this? Is, is there some rules that you're following to make this work? All Everything that we're doing has been done somewhere. Um, we're kind of throwing it all together to make our own design and our own house. 
So the, the greenhouse has been done, the gray water system has been done, um, and aquaponics has been done. That I'm aware of, I haven't seen one that's actually built into the house like we're hoping to do. Is this a difficult endeavor? Is this something anybody can do? What do you? What is your opinion on off-grid housing for the masses, I guess? Um, you have to do research. I mean, you have to look things up and try to figure out what's suitable for you and if if you can live this way. I mean, we're still going to have modern conveniences. We're not going to give up a washer. We're not going to give up a dryer or a dishwasher. So we're going to have those things. It's just you need to figure out how much energy are you using? How much water do you think you're going to need? It's, it's more planning. Mm-hmm. I think we've talked to our viewers quite a bit about that in the RV because you know, we are off grid a lot. And as long mm-hmm. as we manage our resources, we can stay off grid with what we take with us for quite a while. So I would assume you could do the same in a house. Yeah. And, and one of the things is, you know, we, we look at in the summer, we're going to have an abundance of electricity. So it'll be convenient to have uh, maybe an oven similar to yours in your RV where we can use electric when we have an abundance of electricity, but in the winter, We'll have to cook with gas more and uh, use an induction plate to uh, in the summer versus uh, gas cook stove in the winter. So when picking an RV, we always talk about size and layout. What are some of the considerations that you've had to do with to pick your size and your layout of your house or have there been any? Yes, there has. Um, one of the things that you have to look at is where is the sun going to hit in your house? because if it's not hitting a a thermal mass, it's not going to warm anything. So it basically ends up being a a longer, skinnier house so that more of that sun can hit and warm more of that thermal mass inside. And with it being longer, we have a a larger greenhouse then. Size-wise, how big is this house going to be? Is it going to be a pretty standard house or are you going to live in 300 square feet like us? Uh, (laughs) We're looking about 1,500 square feet right now. So lots of room. (laughs) Relatively that's speaking. A, that's a mansion for you guys, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I would assume that region is a, a big factor in the design of a house like this. Because mm-hmm. in Michigan, you have quite a bit of moisture. Uh, you also have winter. I mean, like here, it's February right now, and we're out in t-shirts and shorts. But in Michigan, it's pretty cold. Um, I think that the, the angles and the dimensions change. Uh, I mean, we're hiring a designer to do all of that, so I don't know the exact... Mm-hmm differences but But that's something very important it is very important to consider when you're trying to do something like this and how are you going to heat the home um primarily from the uh passive solar just the sun coming through the through the windows um they do have some special uh, i I forget the name i think it's low e windows glass the windows the glass that uh allows the heat to come in and reflects it back into the house instead of allowing it to go out of the house um Aside from that, we will have a in-floor radiant heating system uh, with solar hot water panels on the roof. Mm. And that will be backed up by, uh, that's also what we'll be using for heating our our water that we use. And it will be backed up by a propane uh, on-demand water heater. And the other thing is, is with the greenhouse, there is actually a like a wall in between the greenhouse and our house. In southern climates, they don't have to do that. for one, it keeps out moisture, but it also helps to insulate the house. So the greenhouse is actually attached to the house yes. directly. Yes. yes. Okay. So it's like a probably like a thermal barrier to yes. you and the outside. Yeah. Makes sense. How much does a house like this cost you in relation to a standard sticks and bricks house? So I mean, if you're you're talking about square foot price, it's it's going to be more expensive. Um, so a lot of technology. Yes. Right. Your solar yes. panels cost more than wire. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at a ballpark $30,000 electrical system. It's going to cost us 10000 to connect to a grid system. So it's but we gonna, won't have a utility bill. But we won't so have a utility sense. bill. But right now we're estimating we're going to spend about $20 more per square foot than a typical house. So you, earlier you guys mentioned you, you stayed in one of these houses before. I mean, it, is it? Like a pretty normal house? Are you comfortable? Like It is comfortable. Uh, when we went to New York, it was in February, and it was, <laughs> with the wind chill, about negative 20 degrees. Um, outside, we wore long johns the entire time. However, when we were in the house, I think the coldest temperature was about 60 degrees. Wow. So. And that was with no 
heating. Uh, they, they did not have an in-floor heating source that we will, so. Well, this is really cool. I'm really excited for you guys. and. Hopefully in a future Mondays of the Martins, we can uh, tour, tour <laughs> yeah. this house. So I'm Absolutely. very excited to uh, see this. So thank you guys so much for joining us and answering all of our questions. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions for them, leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll reach out to them and answer them for you. Something like that. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's Mondays with the Mortons. We really appreciate you watching this. So give it a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making these videos for you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.